morning, good morning, good morning, and thank you for joining me on another episode of the Roundtable Talk Show. I am your host, Sharifa Hardy, and I'm going to ask you to do what I always ask you to do, and that is to go out and be an evangelist for the Roundtable Talk Show. This is a show that you will not want to miss, especially today, because I can tell you about at least a few of our guests, and they are interesting. Their personalities, their stories, their journeys, their struggles, and we're going to meet some new people today. So you want to go ahead and share this show. Find an entrepreneur, find a business owner, find someone who is struggling with marketing. Maybe they want to get their music out there. They don't know how to produce. Maybe they need a new telephone for their business. So much information that we're sharing today, and we want you to be a part of it. So while you're going ahead and sharing the show, I'm going to do what you brought me here to do, and that is to introduce our guest. So I want to introduce our first guest, who is a dear friend of mine. You see him every Wednesday the at 10 a.m. Pacific on Face to Face Talk Show as my co-host. We have a lot of fun. We have a lot of discussions, but you know what? He actually does take things seriously. Paul Foss is the president of Ring Boost, and he steers the company toward new growth opportunities. He runs national business development, building strategic relationships with providers and advertising agencies, IT consultancies, and telecom companies to create new value for all parties. Paul oversees the sales and marketing functions, working with clients of all sizes to find memorable numbers that will be game changing for their business. Good morning, Paul. How are you? Good morning, my dear friend. How are you? I'm excited to have you here. I'm always excited when you're here. Because you have no idea what I'm going to say, which is fine. So yes, I am the, I am the president and co-founder of ringboost.com. Our specialty, our product is phone numbers, memorable phone numbers, but that's just our product. Our real why is driving voice communication, driving, especially in an increasing digital age, helping business owners connect with clients and potential clients through voice. And the way we do that is helping them get a number that stands out, that is more memorable than seven random digits. Business owners, um, all the time they pick their name, their domain, their logo. I will bet you Claudia had somebody design that background behind her. Um, Sanjay picked the, uh, the color red on the wall and then we let a, a, some phone company hand us seven random digits. And I think that's crazy. I think picking a number that resonates with you, that's memorable, that stands out, is an important part of communication, helps drive more calls. And this is the last time I will go over 30 seconds. I went one minute and 14. Um, so I will not make any comments over 30 seconds after that. Thank you for having me. You got jokes, Paul. You got jokes live on the air. That is wonderful. Why? Is it important for you to be on the roundtable talk show? Because uh, first of all, I love meeting new, I would say first and foremost, it's less about promoting my business and more about a me meeting amazing people. Every time I've come on the show, I have met awesome uh, business owners, entrepreneurs, uh, uh, faith leaders, you name it across every spectrum. I get to meet awesome people and learn something from each show. So that's why I like to come on. The secondary benefit is I get to educate more people about the power of voice and thinking about their voice strategy but for me, it's really just about meeting new, amazing um, business owners and just humans in general. Mm -hmm. Yes, I think it's because you like to debate, Paul. I think you're one of the world's greatest debaters. We, on the last show, one of our regular guests who's been here, I think 12 times said, this is the best show I've ever been on because Paul is amazing. And you were making some points and she was disagreeing. I was like, this is cool, but I like it because so often when I have guests, they're polite, nice people, Paul. And they just kind of tend to agree and go along with the flow. You just turn up and go in a different direction. So I find that interesting. Yeah, I just, it's not about debating. It's about really getting to understand what people think and not sitting in our safe zone and just all being like, let's go right here. Let's challenge each other in a respectful, I mean, different on this show than other shows, but in order to learn and grow, you need to really, I need to understand where you're coming from. And I want to understand, and I want people to challenge me. I want someone to say, well, voice communication is dead. It's all digital. Like it's all internet and digital. Like I, I, as opposed to everyone going, oh, that's wonderful. I, I think it's wonderful. great. You're awesome. Then we don't learn. So it's not about, Debating, is it, is it about just pushing us a little bit out of the immediate comfort zone that we all want to sit in? Mm -hmm. I think that's an excellent point. So I'm going to come back to you, Paul, and I'm going to go out of my comfort zone, and I'm going to introduce my next guest, who's also been on this show, 
I, I don't know, I think five or six times we did a special show around him and his team. And he is one of the few people, I think the only person that I know who was actually knighted. He is an actual real life in the flesh. Well, actually in Zoom, Knight, Mr. Sir Sanju Galani. Sanju is an entrepreneur and he understands what level of dedication and support is necessary to help make a business successful. His partner, Selena, an MBA and MHA graduate, is also an integral resource, providing her expertise in healthcare marketing, finance, and client services. We are strongly convinced that in today's business world, it's a valuable asset to understand the global market and how it can present opportunities. Good morning. Sir Sanju, how are you? Fantastic as always. How are you? I'm always excited when you're here. I got my group. I got my team today. So I'm feeling the magic. And Sanju, I love how you always just sit there all quiet and calm. Sanju wakes up. It's like, oh my God, it's like a different person. Drop some nuggets, right? Some golden nuggets. <laughs> yeah. So I'm going to ask you the same question I asked Paul. Why do you continue to return to the roundtable talk show? Honestly, I, just like him, it's it's brilliant to learn about different people that normally we wouldn't get exposure to, right? Um, and, and have those discussions and figure out how different industries and different different professionals can actually mesh together to create things that are more cohesive. Um, and, you know, like simple thing like Paul was talking about the vanity numbers. And, you know, as much as in my world, phone numbers, like, why do you want the phone to ring, right? It's like, let them email you. Um, but there, there is value to building a brand and, and building, you know, something and substance behind a brand um, so that no matter where people go and what they do, they always remember you. So it's, it's really interesting to do that. Um, the other thing that I want to also kind of bring up today is that, you know, it's been a year since we launched our podcast, um, which I still need to get you on. I was about um, to say, I was about to say that, like, I don't even remember being on yeah. that show or even an invitation. So we, we recorded um, the first half of this year. Um, it's called Antox, so antox.com. Um, and yeah, it's just, it's just a fun way to talk about different marketing and, and different um, cultural things that are going on in a way that isn't really um, techy or overbearing. So, you know, it's, it's just something I'm kind of really happy that we kind of started last year and we've kind of carried through. Um, and, you know, like I said, I'm excited to, to talk to you about it after and see if we can get you on. We got to talk about seeing if we can get me on. I mean, you know, I'll just give you some I'm just asking. Time. I mean, if I got it, if there's a process on you, I'll See, go you through the process. Know the guy, right? So <laughs> <laughs> I won't just jump to the front of the line. <laughs> of course, that'd be really awesome. So yeah, we've been doing that for about a year now. It's been really fun, and uh, you know, looking forward to and coming on these shows kind of allows me to learn and and uh, and and think of different topics to kind of work on with people, right? Right. Yeah. One of the things that we talk about often on the show, somehow, some way, in every conversation, it still comes back to COVID. It still comes back to, you know, what we're going through. And one of the things that I was so proud of it, with you and your company is that you did an outreach and you actually helped people pro bono with their marketing in order to help them become successful. What was that about? Why did you decide to do that? So, so, you know, we've always, I've uh, personally always appreciated the fact that at some point in my life, somebody gave me a chance, right? I mean, this all didn't come together just because I rolled out of bed and said, all right, let's do it. You know, there, there's opportunities that were given at, at younger ages and, and by people who um, took a leap of faith. And to me, it's always been, you know, though, though you may not have your traditional whatever job, whatever you want to call it, um, to support you, there's always an opportunity to build something and, and become a little more self-sustaining. Um, you know, and, and not to be cliche, but having those multiple or those, those alternate ways to create and grow um, is very important, just even just mentally, right? And to have that break of doing something that you're actually passionate about. So what we took um, into account this year was, you know, the fact that unfortunately a lot of people were um, let go or, or, you know, moved into, around in their companies um, and they wanted to start something, but they didn't know what to do, how to do it, or straight up, they just didn't have the income to do it, right? The, the revenue to spend. So we went out and we actually proactively met with people, business owners, potential entrepreneurs, um, vetted them through. And, you know, if there's an idea that we thought had legs or, you know, they just needed that little push um, to get to where they need to go, we were happy to kind of sit back and, and help them get there. Um, and, and like you said, at, at no cost to them. So something that is just is more of a passion project, something that's close to our heart. Um, and, and like I said, for me, it's always been, I've always been appreciative of the fact that we've been given so much opportunity and we're so blessed um, that, you know, to, to give it back and then be able to contribute back is very important. 
Oh, I agree. When you when you talk about, I'm going to come back to you, Sir Sanju, but when you speak about um, being blessed and give it back and that kind of thing, I'm going to have to blow my horn for a little bit and toot my own horn um, because people talk about how much I do and how much I give back and how much I help entrepreneurs. But I do that because there were people who poured into me. There were people who blessed me. There were friends that, that helped me. And I want to introduce one of the people who was one of the first people about 12 years ago who opened doors for me. He opened doors for me in entertainment. He opened doors for me in Hollywood. He was the person who helped me get one of my largest interviews with Miss the great Patti LaBelle. He's doing so much. He's an amazing man. And he's so humble. His bio is not going to tell you how of the things that this gentleman has done. We started a show years ago in 2010 today called, um, 2010, 10 years ago called Coffee Break with Eric Seats and Sharifa Hardy. And we're going to announce that we have a new show coming up starting January 7th called Love, Harmony, and Happiness with Eric Seats and Sharifa Hardy. So we're going to discuss the one topic that I've left alone, which is love. But I want to introduce what he has on his bio and what he says, Mr. Eric Seitz, who is a native of Indianapolis, Indiana. He is a two-time Grammy award-winning producer and drummer to the stars. He has been playing the drum since the age of three. In 1997, Eric and Rapture Stewart established Key Beats Inc. and were noticed by Timbaland for their production skills. They were then signed to a deal with Warner Chappelle. Good morning, Eric. How are you? I'm, I am well, thank you. How are you? I'm excited to have you here. I'm excited to be here on this platform. I'm already super uh, excited about what's going on. I, I like meeting new people and, and like-minded individuals in progression. And so this is an, it's an honor to be here to meet everybody else as well. Yes. So we go way back. You opened so many doors for me, you, you, but not just for me. When we met, you were focused on the next great drummer where you were creating opportunities for children. You were giving them a skill, teaching them how to become drummers like yourself. Correct. Um, and yeah, we have helped because I, I really feel like me pursuing music period, it kept me focused as a, a, a child. I mean, and it is a, it's something that you always wanted to get a little better at, it, you know, something to aim high for, but under, that umbrella of music as a whole start venturing out into different uh, subsidiaries and things of that nature to to monetize and, and as well as just provide an, uh, outlets for maybe a, a source that I was once provided. It's important to make sure that that happens again to someone else. Mm -hmm. I see. So since then, what have you been up to? You have some new music that's out. Yeah, just released a, a new album, Grew is Therapy. Uh, myself and Alex Evans, who have been touring with Miss Patti LaBelle for the last 17 years, um, and as well as other artists, we have released a project together um, just to help soothe the times. Uh, music is a great contributor of peace. And so uh, we know that music is healing. Music can get somebody through circumstances and different things of that nature. So I, uh, it was, it's just another contribution to the world of music, yeah. Mm -hmm. So when people hear the music, what is it that you want them to do? How is it that you want them to respond? I call it feel good. I'm not a such a promoter of genres, if you will, because I, I feel like there's such a limit in saying that I do this type of music. I, I only consider two types of music, good and bad. <laughs> uh, I'm, I'm, I'm diverse enough in, in, to understand what quality is. And you can, I can sense and get the quality out of any type of music um, and, and, and can hear the energy behind it. So that, you know, it's an ongoing, never ending growth. Mm -hmm. Okay, so those are the easy questions, right? And that's what I do here on the round table talk show. I give you a little bit of fluff. How you doing? How you feeling? And then I hit you, bam, with that hard question. So my question I'm gonna ask in front of our whole audience and our guests is, are you gonna be ready for love, harmony and happiness? Are you ready to have these conversations? Cause they may not be easy. People may ask hard questions. You know what? I have an opinion. I have experiences uh, and no one can take that from me. So yes, I am ready and, and I'm excited. I'm excited about it. Can't wait. Why are you so excited? Well, I have concerns and questions too, just, you know, and it's, and it's open and it's round table. So that means engagement. Um, and like uh, Paul said earlier, learning, being able to learn something else. To, uh, I'm, I'm open and optimistic enough to receive 
something that I may not know about, but I know, I, like I said, I do have something to contribute as well. Okay. What kind of questions you have? I'm just curious. Can I get one? Like just one? You put me on this. I don't know. Give me time. <laughs> <laughs> Can I come back in about 40 minutes and ask to see if you came up with a question? How about we save that for the show? <laughs> no, I wanted, no, okay, we're going to save that for the show. I'm just trying to get a response, see if I can get you to come out. He's like, no, we'll tune in on that show. I'm going to come back with you, Eric. I'm going to come and I'm going to go ahead and introduce our next guest, Mr. Ari Baum. Ari Baum is a certified financial planner and CEO of Endurance Wealth Partners. For over 23 years, he has been working with people who are passionate about life and want to gain clarity around their money. Ari works closely with his clients on a broad range of financial services, planning from estate and retirement planning strategies to lending solutions. Good morning, Ari. How are you? Hey, I'm doing great. How are you doing today? I'm excited. You ready to be on this panel? Because I don't know what's about to happen. <laughs> I'm born ready. <laughs> Tell us a little bit about yourself, Ari, who you are and what you do. All right. So I am a family man, a a sports enthusiast, as you can tell from this lovely piece of machinery behind me, as well as the CEO of Endurance Wealth Partners. You know, you said it so beautifully before, we work with people that are passionate about life and want to gain clarity around their money. It's been our experience that most people tend to think of their finances, put it in a little shoebox and shove it in the closet because see no evil, hear no evil. So what we do is we walk into the room, we take that shoebox out of the closet, we take all those questions, the uncertainties and the fears, and we convert it into an actionable plan. So that way you can embrace life, not be afraid of your finances, and go out and be passionate. Mm -hmm. Two things. Number one, I like the whole sports, and you referenced the, what I would call, let me tell you what I would call that. That is what I would call a clothes hanger. That's what I would call it. <laughs> because after sitting there for a while, I just be like, let me just put this on there because I'm not about to ride this bike. So I love the mm -hmm. fact that you have the activity. But do you feel that people are truly afraid of finances? Maybe they don't understand it. So what I found is to our educational system's fault, you know, it's not that people are incapable of understanding or, or embracing it. It is a lack of education for the most part. And we tend to fear things we don't understand. And what I found is that obviously there's a direct correlation for the way you live your life and the way you manage your finances. You know, when we think of, you know, the elephant of the room, such as retirement, you know, I always tell people, if you don't put this money away for you, no one else will. You know, we're not, a, you know, we're not as good looking as Paul or we're not nice that we're gonna, yeah, I got you covered that, you know, we're going to have someone just come in and-, and, and Please don't and, encourage him. I just have to say, <laughs> not encourage Paul. I want his head to grow and fill up the entire screen, you know, <laughs> but uh, what I found is, you know, and I use sports as an example, you know, my passion outside of finances, I love doing triathlons and marathons. And as you can tell from this magnificent specimen sitting before you, I am clearly not built or have the genetics of an athlete. And I have a funny story I could share with you later about that. But what I found is through having a focused training plan and having good habits and consistency can lead to amazing results. You know, that's led me to Boston, the, I guess the Boston Marathon on several occasions. It's led me to the Ironman 70.3 World Championships on two occasions. And again, I am not a six foot two, 200 pounds of pure muscle that uh, is doing this. I am just a person that recognized in finance and in life that a little elbow grease and a little consistency goes a long way to achieving goals. Okay, I like that. I have some questions for you, but I want to go ahead and introduce our next guest who has been sitting so patiently, Ms. Claudia Miller. Claudia is a business owner, a career coach, and speaker who helps driven professionals advance in their careers while getting fifteen dollars to $50,000 salary increases even during COVID. Due to her success, she's been featured in Business Insider, Forbes, and WGN and was named one of the top 23 most innovative career coaches of 2020 by Business Insider. Good morning, Claudia. How are you? Morning, Sharif. I'm doing great. How are you? I'm fine. Are you ready for this show? I always have all the women and then a guy. 
right? Today I have all the guys and a lady. So I'm like, how is this going to go? Exactly. We're going to, we got to take care of each other. <laughs> yes. Yes. I'm with you. I'm with you. Tell us about yourself, Claudia. Yeah. So as you mentioned, I'm a career coach and I help driven professionals um, accelerate in their careers. Um, like many other professionals, very ambitious, but I know that there are faster and easier ways to move up the career ladder. And it doesn't mean that you're cutting corners or that you're half-assing when you're doing at work. Is These are professionals that have worked hard, that read best practices, that network with other people, and they really go above and beyond in their current job. But they are learning at a faster speed. And, you know, I believe that you should not stay in the same role for five, 10 years and pay your dues to then be promoted if the person above you retires or they get promoted. So I show people how to get more empowered during their job search, how to have more control. And alongside of that is how do you stand out from the competition? How do you cut through the noise? And how can you get those 50, $60,000 in salary increases? So um, this is something that I'm very passionate about. I love it. And, you know, I, like I said, I make it easy, easy and actionable for people to get those results, whether they come from humble beginnings, don't have a Ivy League degree or don't have the connections, it's all possible. Okay, that's interesting. So your focus is more on employees, helping them to remain employed, but earn more money. Is that correct? Correct. And I also work with other business owners where maybe they started their business and for whatever reason, they want to jump back into the corporate or they'll say, you know, I've done a great job managing my own business, but now I'm interested in going to work for Netflix or, you know, Disney or whatever that may be. Um, And they're trying to pivot back into the corporate world. So I help them, you know, how to communicate those skills um, through like the resumes, through the interview, but still be able to showcase that you can still learn and that you can still be molded. Um, One of the things that most entrepreneurs are scared of is, you know, I I ran my business for 10, 15 years and I've done really great accomplishments. I feel that my manager is going to be feel threatened with all my accomplishments. Like they're not going to, I'm either going to be overqualified or they're just going to not give me the opportunity. So there's like different strategies to be able to do that. Okay, that I might have to take a look at my resume. You might have to go give me a day job. I don't know who's hiring. I tried to get a job at Ring Boost, but they were like, "We are not hiring you." <laughs> There's so. definitely other um, industries that are hiring, and they're thriving cur- um, with everything happening around us. Okay, we we need a list because I'm, I'm gonna start looking for a job today after I finish this. Sh- no, I'm just kidding. I'm just totally flipping. Kidding. But what are some of the industries? Um, So like right now it would be like fintech, um, as well as a lot of technology, um, artificial intelligence, like one of the companies is NVIDIA, I would say, um, Slack, and because there's a lot of communication, Microsoft Teams, everyone has gone virtual now that you need a platform that you can communicate and, you know, collaborate with projects. So Zoom as well um, are those companies that are thriving right now where it's needed and now a lot of companies are pivoting more towards the whole work from home culture. They seen the benefits, they saw how the impact was because they weren't ready for it. Especially those companies that are very archaic or maybe um, old school minded that say, I need you to come into the office even though there's no need for you to be here. And now they kind of had that rough reality, um, you know, kind of said that you need to figure out how to work from home in the next two to three days because we're going to shut down your business going to go out of business. So I'll think of those platforms and technology that people now have to leverage and use every day. Um, are those companies that are thriving? Grocery stores, Instacart um, are all really great companies to look at. Yes. Sanju, you made quite a few changes during this pandemic to allow your company to thrive and the majority of your employees, if not all, work virtually, correct? So, so it's kind of funny. We, when I started the company, that was the model is mm-hmm. everyone go work from home, go work from wherever you want. As long as the whole, the whole premise was, I don't care where you work, when you work, just get it done on time. So mm-hmm. something is due at noon, it better be my inbox at 1158 kind of thing. Mm-hmm. Um, then people started wanting to come into a space for the social aspect. So we got an office and I said, all right, come on in if you want. Again, you don't have to. Mm-hmm. Um, but I think it's, it's been kind of, I don't want to say nice, but it's been nice to go back to the roots of the premise of how we started which is go work wherever you're comfortable work however you're comfortable um and get people back into that zone because i think it really helps um them balance right like to tie a graphic designer down to a desk from nine to five and expect them to perform when they're creative at two in the morning it's not going to work 
Okay. Right. So giving them that flexibility to wake up at two o'clock, go, <gasps> and, you know, actually go ahead and execute on what they're doing, but then sleep till noon. It, it's, it's more beneficial for my clients. Right. And it's beneficial for us because we get um, them into a zone where they're happy and they're productive. Right. Mm-hmm. So if retention goes up, um, everything goes up. Right. And it's just it's a brilliant, well, if I may say so myself, it's a brilliant it's model. Brilliant. Right? <laughs> No, I like that. But I'm a, you know, I got to look at the flip side of that coin. When you say, um, you know, people can work from anywhere, the retention goes up. What about people who just simply say this, this gra- graphic designer cannot work at 2 p.m. He only works at 2 a.m. Why not get another graphic designer who's a 9 a.m. kind of person as opposed to the 2 a.m. graphic designer? So, so that's, that's great because we actually do balance it. So we kind of have both. We have the guys that we know are more creative at odd hours and we have the guys that want to work that nine to five hours. Mm-hmm. Um, the, the key with our company is that all of us are available 24 seven. So if you call mm-hmm. us on Saturday afternoon, cause you forgot something for a Monday morning conference, it gets done. If you mm-hmm. call us cause there's a spelling mistake on something that, that you put out there, we fix it for you. Like it's, it's, it's one of those give and take relationships where, you know, we like to believe that everyone, you know, we're all adults, right? And then at the end of the day, we should be able to manage Are we? Right? Are we? Are we? Are we? <laughs> I mean, except for Paul sometimes from what I've seen so far. Generally, <laughs> generally speaking, you know, we would like to trust that, uh, that, that people are able to manage their own schedules. And uh, yeah, it, it helps, right? Because then it, it helps the mothers, it helps the, you know, the families, it helps the young guys who want to party all night Sunday and not come in until two in the afternoon on Monday. Mm, yeah, excellent point. Paul, Ari, go ahead, Paul. I think it's funny that, you know, we all are trying to justify um, how we're working now. Like, yeah. who, who the heck said that nine to five in an office is the right thing? Like, like you see the sign says normal is broken behind me. Like, because it, you know, we talk about this on the other show, like, it, you know, and I, and I don't want to get political or, or talk about race relations, but in, in the cause, you know, black people were three fifths of a human. That doesn't make it right because it was the way things are like the goal of all of our businesses. Number one is to make money. Like we have to make money. We go out of business mm-hmm. to help our clients. Everything else is part of my French horse. You know what? So <laughs> we're all trying to justify being remote, not being in an office, working different hours. I don't know who we're justifying it to. If we have a business that is profitable and we're providing for clients, I always joke with people, like I've interviewed a hundred SEO companies. And I say, look, man, if you, if your plan is to go stand on the corner of the room on your head and it increases my, my rankings, my links, my site visitors and my checkouts, I don't care about normal SEO. So I think we have to stop justifying the reasons, uh, Night Sanju allows people to work at 2 a.m. If that works for his business and his clients, then that's how it works. So I don't justify any of it. I think that most of us wanted to try this partial remote, save people to commute to this. We were all afraid because we live in this world of comfort. And what COVID did was it forced our hand. It forced us to do these things. And then we're like, oh, crap, that wasn't so bad. My business is operated exactly the same. We haven't lost clients, lost revenue. We still talk every day. I'm just not physically t- We've become great friends, Sharifa. We work on multiple shows together. We have never physically met. We have never, you know, get Eric. I, I concur fully with what Paul is saying right now. The beautiful thing about this is, is if anything, it's just really telling on who we are anyway. Um, and with when, with the entrepreneurial mindset, and 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 knowing that uh, gravitating to other like-minded beings is that's what business is. It's not a location. It, it's a uh, it's a it's a mentality, right? And so what's funny is as long as we're clever, it didn't do anything but force me to be a little more clever in my approach. And I just believe in uh, recovery and uh, resolution. You know. Uh, I, I don't have as many complaints because I, I really, the, nothing's going to stop me from getting it done. And I feel like everybody on this platform just has that approach and the mindset. And really at the end of the day, that's what it is. Um, we, we don't make excuses. You, you recover and you, you create solutions, if you will. And it probably doesn't even matter what the field is really, you know, 
your energy is what people buy. We just happen to get behind certain products, but it's really our energy is what they're engaging with. And I know you guys can relate. Yeah, and totally and ultimately, not- technology and growth doesn't care what Claudia thinks. It doesn't care what Paul Faust thinks. Like Facebook doesn't care. Like you could say, I don't believe in social media and the way, blah, blah. Nobody cares what I think. Mm-hmm. It's going to happen. You either figure out how to adapt, make changes, um, do your own thing, or get left behind. Like progress doesn't care necessarily what every individual thinks. Like music, uh, you go to a concert, you buy the album for $15. Okay, then the world changed. Nobody cared what the world changed. You better get on board and figure out how to adapt and change with it or change it to a way that you think it should be and hope people jump on board. Yeah, I, I, I agree. I think one of the silver linings of what we learned from COVID, you know, some people look at it as, you know, obviously a lot of terrible things happen, but it's all about our perception of it. You know, there's a term that gets thrown around, socially distant, you know, <clears throat> I, I kind of flipped the script and I said to myself, we're not socially distant, we're physically distant, but we're socially more connected now than ever before. You know, who could have ever imagined six strangers from all across the country coming together face to face from the comforts of our home? You're right. So, so progress, you know, it's happened from the dawn of time. There, there used to be a, a theory there's a philosophical term called a Malthusiast. Mm-hmm. These were people that were calling for the end of the world because they said at the growth rate of the population, we were going to run out of food. Guess what? Uber Eats is still delivering. So <laughs> you know, to Paul's point, technology has enabled us to do so much more than ever imaginable. And to your point, Sharifa, you know, I'm going to push back a little bit because mm-hmm. personally, I'm loving the remote working you know, I'm in New York, you know, I'm working from home because Manhattan is not the same of what it used to be, you mm-hmm. know, both from a, you know, a virus perspective, plus everything else going on there right now, that, you know, we're adapting to it. Mm-hmm. But where this is going to lead us to, I think is probably a better mental health place, mm-hmm. because people can work from home, they can do more. But on the same token, we are what's the word I'm looking for, we're social creatures. Mm -hmm. There is something that I do miss about sitting down face to face in a group and kind of collaborating on things. So I think there's gonna be, you know, there's nothing that goes to an extreme in life, right? Mm -hmm. It's not like the days where we have to be in the office 24 seven or nine to five, like Sir Ganji was, you know, was was alluding to, you had people that work differently. I think we can include more people into this larger network Maybe you have some in-office interaction, maybe some virtual interaction, and we're going to kind of end up somewhere in the middle, I Mm -hmm. hope. Yes, let's see. Claudia, join the conversation. The guys are talking today. What are your thoughts? Yeah, no, definitely. I agree. Um, In certain aspects, too, is um, we're looking at different ways. Like I mentioned earlier, like with companies, they learn to be adaptive and how to best perform. And one of the things I've also noticed is Um, Like what work from home was pre-COVID is very different now. Now, parents are having to deal with their kids' social distance learning um, while they're still having to take care of the household and still having to work and people's just timelines have extended. So some, like Paul was mentioning, well, we kind of can create our own hours, but there's still companies that say you have to work between the hours of eight to five and you know, and now it's extended to, now I know we don't commute, I know you're not going to go anywhere, so we expect you to work from eight to seven, and if I email you at eight, I still expect a response, and I know you're still managing things around you, but I know you're at home, so it's just kind of like these different normalcies have changed, and I think that, kind of like to Ari mentioned, kind of have to take control of our mental health, making sure that we're taking care of ourselves, that at the end of the day, a job is a job. It should not risk your health. It should not risk your family. And if a company is not taking care of you um, professionally um, or being understanding, then maybe this is a good red flag to sh- kind of show you, is this the company I want to continue working for? Do they align with my values? Um, especially not just COVID, with everything happening, Black Lives Matter. Is How is our company represented? And do I want to be a part of that? Because the way that some of the companies are reacting to everything around us can tell you so much about its leadership and where they see the value in. 
and where are they going to invest in their resources? So I think that's a good pulse to take on to kind of give you a little bit more transparency of who you're working for and who do you want to work for that actually aligns with you and will help you grow and really achieve and thrive. In. Mm -hmm. Excellent point. Now I want to go over to Ari because we listen to Claudia and, and for the people who are interested in getting a job, it has to align for your values. But so often employees don't want to take that risk or leave because they're financial fears. What are your thoughts, Ari? I'm living proof. You know, I grew up working at a bunch of Wall Street firms, you mm -hmm. know, and uh, I can tell you, you know, specifically, you know, I won't mention the names, but I recall sitting in a firm that was going through a difficult period during the financial crisis. And management walked us all into the room and they said point blank to us, look, you see what's going on. You know, the room is going around. We want you to know we're gonna do what's best for the shareholders. So whether that means we keep you, we sell you or spin you off, we, we have a fiduciary responsibility to the shareholder. And you know, obviously that made us all felt warm and fuzzy you know, gee, thanks. You know, we feel really good because we're pouring our heart and soul into this business and for you and to tell us that we're just, you know, you value our labor, but not at us. Mm -hmm. So that opened up my eyes to saying that, you know what, you know, a lot of these big Wall Street firms are very successful in their own rights, God bless them. But that led me on the path of opening up my own firm because I said, I don't have to be a in order to be successful. I don't have to, you know, take advantage of labor underneath me. I can do the right thing. And nice guys don't necessarily have to finish last. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I might not be all things to all people, but for the, you know, the select group that I'm privileged to work with, I could be all things for them. And we, you know, our values and our morals and our goals all kind of line up. And to me, that's heaven on earth. I think that's an interesting point. And it's one of the questions that I often ask is when we're looking at our employers, like that experience was horrible for you. I mean, you it was years ago and you still feel it. Like you still feel like you're sitting in that room. But when you become the employer and you have to answer to the shareholders, how do you have that conversation? Well, usually I take my wife out to dinner and we get a nice <laughs> glass of wine. And then from there, I can kind of ease things in. You know, what I found is, is that, you know, if money is the goal, mm -hmm. you know, and that is all that matters to you, you're going to take shortcuts and missteps along the way. You might get there, but you're going to realize it's not exactly what you want in life. Mm -hmm. You know, what I found is that, you know, what separates us from, you know, the billionaires and the, you know, the hundreds of billionaires and almost trillionaires out there, you know, obviously they have a huge drive and determination, but there's the sacrifices that they make in order to get it. You know, to, I'm going to go back to sports. Michael Jordan made a lot of sacrifices to get to where he is. LeBron James and, you know, imagine all the NBA players last year moving into a bubble, leaving their families to pursue that goal. You know, there are sacrifices. And for some of us, what we realize is those sacrifices might not be worth those extra couple of dollars. Mm -hmm. So if it means, you know, we'll go to Eric, you're pursuing a passion, you know, of music. And I would say you're fortunate and blessed to be able to monetize that, mm -hmm. you, know? you know. What's so funny is people only see the uh, finales a lot of time. And like you were saying, well, a lot of times we never do the research to see how one got there. But I'm a documentary head. I like to really go do because I like facts, factual information. And I'll pull up information from uh people that are in positions that I admire. And I, one thing that I do understand, because it's just not all music, and the cliche that I've learned and gravitated to a while ago is not to put all those eggs in one basket, if you will. And so what's funny is um, people see me as a musician, but they don't know that I worked at the Honda dealer. They don't know about Scott Robinson. They don't know about the, the insurance business that I was in or real estate. They know what's shiny and shiny is music. It gets more attention. Um, but all of those, uh, all of those employers that I've had um, and all of the information and, and knowledge that I've gained from those other sources of income, I've learned to apply that into my own thing. So nothing was in vain pretty much. And I have no regrets. Um, even the gardening service that I owned in college, 
there's something about that and all of those tools and information that I gain is just like, and, and even our bad experiences with certain employers, we just, I guess we need to just end up becoming the change that we need to see. And that's not just talk because talk is cheap and seen is believing. Mm -hmm. um, so, and, 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 and that will tell on us and our success, uh, mm -hmm. what we've invested in the time because nothing happens just like that. We, uh, we're, we're successful because you've earned it in some way, shape, or form and invest it. And that a lot of times it's time and not so much the money, you know, mm -hmm. but that time and that passion is very much so vital as well. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, I, mean, I, agree with you. I, I agree with you. And, I, and you're one of the people I've watched that along the way, you know, we've been friends for some time. And I, I personally saw when you were doing the whole Dancing with the Star circuit, all of a sudden you had a whole bunch of new friends and a whole bunch of new comments because again, dancing with the stars you're out there celebrities public people want to know who eric seats are but who eric seats is but when it's other times and it calms down it's like where are these same people but they're attracted to the shiny i understand that and i like to cater to perfect strangers this is exactly why i'm here on this platform i love that i don't know you guys from anywhere <laughs> but what's great is i know that this is powerful mm -hmm. and um Success to me is to be able to get my product to a perfect stranger, not so much a relative. I mean, we, we get the sympathy vote. That's almost a given ratio to the equation. But success to me means reaching somebody that had no idea where I'm coming from and now they're a believer. I meet a lot, I'm in Ubers a lot. And every, every time I'm in one, they get this because I'm, I'm my best billboard and I will always be my biggest voice. And I understand that. And I just, you know, I, it follows you. Those in, those certain subtle investments follow. And, you know, and I I don't know. I don't want to talk too much, you guys, because I go, I go hard. I didn't give you a limit. I didn't give you a limit. I only gave Paul a limit. So I'm going to come back to you, Eric. Paul, I'm going to take off. You get another 30 seconds. What, what are your thoughts so far? Uh, let me talk about some people said, Eric, so what you said is you're your biggest voice. That's yeah. why I'm passionate about what I do, because... Music can be music, right? Anyway, a lot of people can make music, but your voice is what matters. Your differentiator what is what matters. And that's why I'm so passionate about voice communication and building voice. Because going back to what Ari said, if you're not building yourself and your voice and who you are, then Ari, you're just a commodity. You're just a guy in a desk hitting trades, P&L, and you're not a human. You're not a, you're not, um, you're not anything special. You're one, and there's another 10,000 people coming out of school who want to be in the financial business. So that's why I'm so passionate about our individuality, um, your voice, your brand, who you are, what you transcend. Because if Eric left everything he's doing and went somewhere else, Eric Sheets is still Eric Sheets. He's not a drummer. He is Eric Sheets. Nobody, Eric I, can drum, I could drum. Eric Sheets. Yeah, I could, seats. I could drum, I could do all that stuff, but I am not Eric. So Eric is a unique entity. The other thing I wanted to talk about, which is, you know, kind of talks about what Claudia talks about and what's on you is, you know, for people like, I believe the people on the show, besides the sickness and the death and all that stuff from COVID, what did COVID give us? What did COVID give Zoom? To me and to companies like Zoom and Uber Eats, COVID presented opportunity. Okay, we were faced with something that we had no control over and it gave us opportunity to change, to work different, to be different, to act different, to think different. What did COVID give other people? Anybody other? It's a very simple, it's one word. COVID gave people excuse. Mm. I didn't build my business because. I no longer worked out because my gym was closed. I didn't connect with my friends because it was hard. Um, uh, my business is failing because, look, and I understand there were certain things out of your control. You got a restaurant, you can't put people in it. Or my gym, nobody can go to the gym. You know what they did? They pivoted. Online classes every day with the same trainers. They got you in. They offer nutrition counseling. So what these things give us, which it, there's going to be another thing tomorrow. There's going to be another one the next day. You have a choice. All right. Look for opportunity. Look for change. Get out of your comfort zone. Figure things out or use excuses. Oh, I can't. Not my fault. 
blah, blah, I'm blah. Sum that up. I'm going to sum that up for you in, in something that I learned a long time ago. Go. And, and I say this to my kids all the time, and one day they're going to appreciate it. You can have <laughs> excuses. You can have results. You can't have both. Mm-hmm. You know? Yep. Yeah. So, so, and by so, the way, so, Ari, your, your yeah. kids hear it now. They might not admit it. They might not want to believe it. They'll certainly never tell dad, I get it. But my kid, my son's in college, got that email from him where he said, all that stuff you've been saying to me for years, I get it now. It, he was listening, didn't yeah. want to admit it. I just think that, you know, you get to choose. Like Eric, Eric Sanju could say something to me. What do I get to choose? I get to choose my reaction. I get to choose my action and I get to choose my mindset. Everything else is external. I can't decide there's a pandemic. I can't decide that there's that this person won an election or that person won an election. I can't just, dis- I can decide my actions, my reactions and my mindset. And yeah. once you get that going, nothing else matters. Yeah, no. sir, Sanju. Uh, totally agree. I mean, it's, it's, it's all choices, right? And it's funny earlier, Eric, you're talking about, you know, all the opportunities and then the jobs and the things we've been through and, you know, I never lasted more than six months to a year in any given job just because I got bored. Same and as same the here. People that you met and the experiences that you had, I started looking at as So I started my first company in my teens and I did the whole corporate thing. And I started looking at my corporate thing as I'm trying to figure out what I don't want to do anymore. Mm-hmm. And when I started looking at it that way, everything changed because everything became an opportunity. Everything became a lesson. Um, and everything set me up to be able to branch out literally a week before I got engaged and say, I'm starting my own thing. Mm-hmm. right and, and so it just it was just brilliant but all these experiences and all these learnings that again like you said paul like we don't even listen to our parents right we just we take it in but we don't admit it um but all these little things that we really as foundations one day they accumulate and it's just it, it all comes together right but, mm-hmm. but the key is to be open to seeing it that way and not getting tied down with the negativity behind it mm-hmm. I, w- I have a question for you sir sanju i'm going to go back to what ari said when i asked him about what he was doing in his business, he said he set his wife down, glass of wine, he had this conversation. You mentioned you wanted to do your own thing one week prior to getting engaged. What was that conversation like? And did it involve wine? Hey, it involved, um, well, we're not really wine drinkers. Um, we're kind of go hard to go home people. Um, but <laughs> <laughs> I heard that. I heard what you had to say. Vodka or rum? <laughs> I used to be tequila and I used to be whiskey. <laughs> I so what was that conversation like so it was interesting because it, it both of our both of us came from very entrepreneurial families like generations on generations on generations of it. um so it wasn't that difficult of a conversation it was more of making the the case or the point that we're at this point in our life where if we don't do it now or we don't at least start it now it's not going to be where it needs to be eventually and it, as much as it's never too late to start, there is a point where if you're going to lay a foundation and plan on starting a family, which is where we were, um, you kind of get all the grunt work out of the way in the beginning, right? As early as possible um, to build. So fortunately, I mean, she's, she's the best thing that's ever happened to me. She, she understands everything um, because again, she's seen it growing up, right? Her parents own their own business. Her grandparents own their own business. Like it's just generations on generations. None of us have ever, except for me, have actually worked for someone. We've always kind of had our own thing. So, you know, having that support and having an understanding of, you know, oh, it's Saturday, I got to go out and meet this client at six in the evening, not what the hell are you doing? It's like, okay, cool, go, go do your thing. And having that has really helped us move forward and, and made that conversation so much easier and made this lifestyle so much easier, right? And it's been, I'm blessed, truly blessed. Yes. Every time you're on the show, you mention your wife. Every time you do, you know, a part of something, she's, she's the mom. Oh, that's so cute. We go have, Eric. Sir Sanju is coming on Love, Harmony, and Happiness. We bring him and his wife. We're going to be like, how you do it? How you work together, live together, be married? I want to I want to be there. That's where I want to be. If you're looking for one of the most supportive people in the world, I, I, you need to be there. Like, it's, it's, it's true. Yeah. Yeah. Your wife's supportive <laughs> in everything you do? 100%. And, you know, and, and obviously we, we give each other respect of, of you know, talking things through and making sure that we're uh, we're cool with it right it's more of a mm. partnership than uh than a yours and mine type of thing that is i want that i want that <laughs> I do, don't don't do it paul i saw your face i'm talking to every everyone but paul i don't even think my wife knows what i do 
I think she could, I mean, that's, she thinks I'm like in the CIA or like, I, I think if you ask her, she'd be like, I really don't know, but, he, but the bills get paid and, and people seem to talk to him. So <laughs> Yeah, but, but your wife is different because you're talking now, but a couple of shows ago, you were like, I just say yes, dear. My mom, my wife bought a house and I was just like, yes, dear, we're moving. <laughs> I went to walk the dog and she bought a house in Florida. And I'm like, okay. <laughs> Sounds good to me, sweetheart. Uh, so, um, I don't even know what to follow up with that. I, I don't I'm gonna, need. I'm, I'm, Sanja, can, uh, I I I need can I borrow your wife when I have a new idea just to get some support? So My wife's like, you know, you're free. <laughs> I think the common thread of what we're seeing here is that it's important to have a support system. 100%. You know, for some of us, you know, we're, we're fortunate to have, you know, loving wives that keep our egos in check. Yeah, and man. So like it, it's great to have that support system because you know as you go through this journey, you're gonna have certainly your ups and you want to share that with someone, but you're gonna have your down moments and you're gonna have doubts. And it's great to have someone that knows you on such a personal oh. level to help remind you of All right. you know, who you are. Yeah. I, I agree with you completely, but I think for everyone listening. I think that goes way beyond or beyond just your spouse or your family. Correct. Um, you get to choose who you surround yourself with. If you want to surround yourself with people for vanity purpose, oh, I want to be around Eric because he's he drums on stage with famous people. Like you, I want to be around you know Sanjay Paul, because Paul was on the Office. I was on it. Like, do you want to surround yourself with people for vanity purpose? By the way, that's okay in certain circles. Hey, you want to look cool? You want to be get it. You get to choose who you're in a circle is. As though, you know, you always hear people say, it's not my line. You know, if you're the smartest person in the room, you're probably in the wrong room. You want people to challenge you. You want to be around good people. But I find too many people complain about their situations. And then I look at who they're with. I'm like, are those real friends? Are those the friends that have you when you're back? Not when you're throwing the party. Not when Eric's saying, come to the concert. Or Sanju wants to support your business. Do they have you when... You got nothing. So yeah. choose who you let yourself into the inner circle. You can have a bigger circle of fun people. I got lots of them. I yeah. know they're not my friends. Get it. Sorry, man. Go ahead and jump, Eric. I concur, Paul. Um, I'm very protective of my spirit and my energy and, and who I allow into this space because the wrong comments coming from somebody that you consider their opinion too much can deter you from your mission. And it could, you know, over time be chiseling hearing the wrong terminologies and, and different things like so i'm very protective of that so i, I keep myself around it and, there, and it is possible to end up with people that are in competition indirect competition with you as well that may be yes. competing with your gift or your talent uh and i've experienced that a lot you know uh, uh you know uh, traveling as a musician comes with the it, the, the trust in that you you have to be a certain person with a certain focus to not lose that touch but a lot of times it's not trusted and so it, it, it it's 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 important to me to protect my spirit so so that i can do what i really need to do to be a better person to society as a whole yes i think that More is so, you know and i, I and i really and i'm protective of that um you have always been, in the time I've known you, you've been very protected of that. That's why I value our friendship and everything that we've done over the years, because I, I know how you are and I've seen you with other people and you're not always that open and that welcome, not rude, you know what I mean? But yeah. you protect your energy to your, your closed circle. Now we are coming down to the last few minutes of the show. And what I love to do at the end of every show is just simply allow my guests the opportunity to speak directly to the audience, to everyone who is watching this show live, as well as everyone who is watching it in the archives and let them know what you want them to take away from your appearance here today. And for once, we're gonna start with Claudia. <laughs> Thanks, Sharifa. Um, yeah, so as I mentioned, career coach, and you know, if there's out there professionals or that are looking to go back and jump into corporate, or they have family members or friends being impacted, uh, please, you know, go to my website at claudia2miller.com. Um, I do offer 30-minute complimentary sessions just so I can get to know you more, and understand where you're at, what you're looking for, and then based off of that, you know, if it's a good fit for both of us. So. If you need help with, you know, getting that job or moving to that dream company or, you know, finally getting paid what you're worth and getting those 20, 30, 
50K salary increases, reach out to me. Absolutely. ClaudiaTMiller.com. Ari, what do you have for us? Okay, so I got a special for, for you and your listeners and viewers today. So we do financial planning, investment management, insurance, and lending. We typically take our clients on a, a discovery process to see if we're the right fit for each other, you know, to become, or to earn the right to become that trusted advisor. But there are sometimes people just have a financial question and they're not looking to really engage, you know, in the process of going uh, with a financial planner. So they're invited to go to our website, www.endurancewealthpartners.com. And there's a book feature or a book here feature on the calendar. And you can schedule a 15 minute call or Zoom. And we will answer any question you may have about anything in life regarding finance, whatever it may be. We will not solicit you. We will not charge. You know, we're big believers in karma. If we can help someone, someone somewhere, the universe will come back in spades. So, uh, that's our offer to you today. Feel free to call, ask a question, and hopefully it'll set you on the journey to financial independence. That's wonderful. I think I'm gonna need 30 minutes though, but I'm just saying that's just for me, not for everybody. You know, because Claudia gave 30 minutes. I felt like that was kind of fair for me to get 30 minutes from Ari. You could have 30 minutes. Anyway, you could have 30 minutes. It's fine. <laughs> Thank you, Ari. You mentioned karma. We definitely have to allow Sir Sanju his takeaway. Uh, I see you're 30 and I raised you one hour. I'm kidding. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, I'll, I'll, leave, I'll leave you with a quote. Um, I found this uh, the other day and I thought it was really cool. Um, so this is from Jane Fraser, who is the first female of a Wall Street bank. So Ari, you'd kind of resonate with this one. Um, she goes, you can have it all, but don't expect to have it all at the exact same time. Mm. And, and I think that's very powerful um, for teaching people balance and, and understanding that your time will come and, and your, your place is there, but you got to put in the work to get there. Um, you know, I encourage you to visit us online, askusforanything.com. Um, of course, it has to be legal. And uh, <laughs> on our podcast, askus.com. <laughs> uh, look forward to coming back on the show. And thank you, everyone. You guys are all awesome. It was really cool meeting you. Are you scheduled again already? Uh, January, February. I've booked pretty much every month. I kind of like this. This is fun. Yeah. Oh, cool. Thank you. And then when we set our schedule, I'm going to get you on for sure. Yes. I'm looking I'm forward to it. <laughs> yeah, I had to go through the process. I had to, you know, send my bio. Well, into last process. year we did them all live, right? It was all in person. So now we got to go to Zoom. So I guess we'll have to get people on Zoom. Yes, yeah. but I'll help you with that if you need some. Or I can fly you into Toronto and we can do it here live. Oh, I would love that. Let's do that. that would be perfect. Let's do that. <laughs> I get all everybody excited. Make sure everybody watches. Eric, you enjoyed yourself today. I love this. Uh, this is so therapeutic. Um, and and I, 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 it was a pleasure meeting everyone here. Uh, I look forward to this again. And, and everyone, stay creative, stay motivated, uh, protect that spirit, and uh, keep going. Uh, we, we're resourceful enough to recover. This yes. two show pass, and then, you know, uh, this is awesome. With This is fuel for me, and I hope that I could be some sort of fuel for you guys as well. Absolutely, but we have to put the music. Where can we get the music oh, while we're? Beating? I'm sorry. Yeah, I'm slipping. So Ali dot biz. So that's a l dash e dot b i z. All the information. Uh, the website is self-explanatory. You can navigate through there, find the music, the video, and upcoming events uh, as we unfold yes. during this very unusual time. But we'll be okay. No excuses either. <laughs> no excuses and a man who takes away all excuses paul what do you have for us i'll do the shameless plug first because i know you're going to ask me uh the website is ringboost.com r-i-n-g-b-o-o-s-t.com if you want to look for a custom number for your business uh you could use a, a code sharifa uh, which will give you 15 percent off of something you want to purchase if you don't want to purchase anything but you have a question about phone numbers or how to use them i'm available anytime to talk to people um, what do I want people to take away? First of all, um, there's so much. Um, <laughs> don't take criticism from people that you wouldn't also take advice from. Um, yeah. every, <laughs> everybody wants to find a reason to knock what you're doing because they're afraid to do what you're doing. Um, you know, uh, the other thing I'll, I'll say for, I got from one of a call with one of my coaches yesterday was um, divorce yourself from the goal, right? And pay attention to the path and the journey to get there. And I'll leave it, the example he gave yesterday, if my goal was to run a marathon, okay, and next year, and on January 5th, I went out and ran a marathon, am I any better? Like, am I any, maybe I have a medal now, right? 
So, but I ran the marathon as opposed to, let's say I scheduled a marathon on June 15th, January, February, March, April, May. I, I practiced running every day. I ate better. I went to the gym. I, I learned everything I could about marathon running. Then June 15th comes up and the marathon got canceled. Oh. I can't do the marathon. So who's, how am I, am I better than if I just ran it on January 15th? So divorce yourself from the goal and pay attention to the process and the systems that get there because that's where you're going to find betterment in your life. That's where you're going to grow as a person. Um, and I got that from last night's call with, with one of my coaches because I believe in always trying to improve. That's heavy. And that's what I'll leave you with. And that was more than 30 seconds. Nothing you can do about it. <laughs> edit you out, Paul. I want to thank you yeah, all. It, you know what, Paul? Gotcha. <laughs> I want to thank you all for being guests on today's episode of the Roundtable Talk Show. And I especially want to thank everyone who tuned in to watch this show live, as well as everyone who was watching it in the archives. Just because you didn't catch the live show does not mean you are not important. We still need your support. We still need you to watch the show. We still need you to share the show. But please don't just watch the show. Don't just share the show. Please visit our guests. They're giving you 15 minutes, 30 minutes, an hour, a phone phone call, music. They're giving so much of themselves just to help you. So please take advantage of it. Visit their websites. They're in the Facebook post, but also follow them on social media. Their links are on their website. Reach out to them, contact them, have that call. And when you do, please let them know. Sharifa Hardy says hi. Now, if you're interested in more ways that I can help your business, or maybe you want to pick up your tickets to my New Year, New You two-day teleconference on December 29th and 30th, or maybe you want to be a guest on the Roundtable Talk Show, please visit my website at asharifa.com. Until next time, everyone have a safe and a blessed day. Bye now.